Okay, we back live, y'all. Movers, what up? This is Warrior Wednesday. Trying to get this thing. 7 p.m. Warrior Wednesday. Every Wednesday, y'all know how we do. To all of my warriors out there, this is where we come. We ask our questions. We talk business. Uh, Soji, what up? Joe Paul, what up? Welcome back. Who we got? Joshi, I see you back. Joshi, I'm so happy to have you back in the building. Christian, I see you. Y'all, I'm going to tell you, y'all are some soldiers, man. I love it. I love it. This is how we supposed to be doing. Let me see. Yeah, IG is definitely trying to stop us from shining. It ain't no question about that. I don't know what's going on with Instagram. Instagram is all the way not on my side, but we're going to keep doing it, though. This is, this is where I get my energy. I love Wednesday nights. I love our warrior on um, Wednesdays. I love my movers. So definitely shout to everybody jumping in every week. I love it. But please, if y'all have any um questions, somebody was asking something about a master's degree earlier. If you don't mind put that putting that comment back up because I didn't get a chance to read it in full. I'm trying to read the comments. So yeah, if y'all if 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 you have a suggestion for a topic we should attack, if you have a suggestion for um a guest we should have on, please throw them in the comments. I love to at least try to give y'all what it is that you are struggling with or will um or really need answers on and bringing people to the table. Yes, I got to delete and then reinstall. No, I didn't delete and reinstall Instagram um, last week. And that's my bad. Y'all got my word. I will delete and reinstall Instagram this week. I see somebody asked me, did I delete and reinstall it? No, I didn't. We give it like another minute for people to jump back in. Let me see. How to market your small business. And that comes from Big Bender Signs. Okay, I'm your guy. I'm definitely a marketing person. So please hit the request button. I think that says Big Bender Signs. Hit the request button and jump in. Ask me your questions. Marketing is, is that's my life. That's what I do. That's what I've been doing since the beginning of my career. So I can definitely help you in that area big time. Um, somebody says self-doubt. Dope, dope, dope. I love that. We could talk about self-doubt all the time. And I love that y'all putting this in the comments, but it'd be even better, like, like step up, jump in this live, ask these questions. But self-doubt, I think that's something we all struggle with. You know, everybody has that self-doubt, myself included. We're starting about another minute. Is that my man official Big Breeze down in Houston? Breeze, what up, family? Let me see. All right, let me see. I got somebody waiting to jump in this thing. Keep, please, keep, keep on putting in the chat things that y'all think we should talk about week over week. I'll go above and beyond to bring on guests who can answer your questions and just topics we should approach. So I love self doubt for sure. How to market a small bit, small business. That's another one that we can definitely go in. Uh, let me see. Continuing your business after the loss of a loved one. Woo! Great topic. Great topic. Um, my man Ed Hennon said, I definitely like to talk about marketing with you. Ed, you got my number offline. We could do it online for sure, but you got my number offline. Let's do it. Okay, I just sent this request out. God willing, it works this go round. We Every time Instagram works, it's like a blessing. It really is. It is a blessing. 
And so thank God. But you need to uninstall and reinstall and clear your cache because Instagram is trying to stop your shine and we got to get you up there because this is bullshit. Nah, you're right. Like, like you got my word. I was supposed to do it after last week, but my word to everything, literally right after this um, live, I'm uninstalling and reinstalling. You got Joe Paul, so, so, so make, make sure you hold him to that account right there because his word is his bond. Okay, nah, so. I, I, no, that's well said. Movers, movers, movers. Make sure y'all hold me to that. Make it, sure y'all hit me like, yo, did you uninstall and reinstall? That's right. 2021 is the year of accountability. Okay. Absolutely. And so I'm not going to uh, stay on too too long because uh, I, I love my movers community and I want everyone having a chance to shine. You asked a question about business plans and acquiring investors and sponsors of that nature. So very much like the music game, the finance game, when you have something that people want, they're going to seek you. Of course, it's always good to bring it into their life. But you, but the key is to know your demographic. Know how it's going to be mutually beneficial for you to take on that investor or even to pitch them. Because it might be something that your demographic has absolutely nothing to do with what they're marketing and stuff of that nature. Also, they want to see that you have stake in the game. They want to see that you've invested in yourself before anything. They want to see really... In, in, uh, in acquiring an investor or a partner is very much just proving an ROI or a rate of a, a return on investment. What are they going to get by investing in your company? But the biggest thing is they should be thinking about how can they get a rate of return by investing in you. You're, you're going to be your best salesperson for whatever it is that you're marketing, selling, trying to distribute. So they have to believe in you. And unless you have stake in the game, like unless you've invested your own money, nobody is going to believe in you. And have realistic expectations. Don't go into it thinking, okay, I have this product that kind of sells, you know, so everyone should want to jump on board with me. Not really the case. And in most situations, I'd have to ask as an investor, why have you not went to the bank and secured financing for this on your own. If your business is doing so well and your numbers speak for itself, why is it that you cannot obtain financing from the bank at a much more attractive rate? And it's not in perpetuity. That, that, that word needs to be thrown around a little bit more. Investors want to have something that they can have forever in perpetuity. If you invest using the bank's money, you only have to pay off the loan. They don't become a lifetime partner. So these are the things that you should think about as an entrepreneur or as somebody trying to seek some sort of capital, You know, whether it's a VC, a venture capitalist, or a private investor, private equity, or your family members, or a direct lender like the bank. So you want to have these thoughts in your brain. Why should they fuck with me? Well, that's the whole purpose of a business plan. Now I'm going to challenge you on something. And I want everybody in this community, listen up. I like Joe a challenge. Paul said, let's go. Okay, let's do it. Because I think that this is a great conversation we're about to have. You mentioned if you have such a great product, they'll find you. I got to challenge you on that. Because one of the people I interviewed late last year, uh, his name is Deshaun Amuru, Amuru. I think I'm saying it correctly. And um, he has a business called Maven. And what Maven does is they bring in hair weave from China. And he created this incredible business model where he was servicing all of the beauty salons across the country. And basically what he did was he cut out the middleman. So once upon a time, African-American women would go to the Korean beauty supply shop, and they buy their hair weave. He, turned, he actually turned the hairstylists in these communities into the salespeople. So now, instead of the hairstylists and, and beauticians sending people across the street where they were getting no money, no kickback, they had no stake in the game, and sending hundreds of thousands of dollars 
in customer business to these Korean American beauty salons, and then they bring it back and they would just make money off putting their hair in. He turned those actual beauticians into salespeople, and now they could sell the hair directly. They cut out the middleman. He made money. They made money. So he was the importer exporter, and they were actually his sales force. Right. So he but turned it kind of like into like an independent franchise where each each individual person became the actual business where they didn't have to deal with the middleman other than this other than that guy. So it's a, it, it's a very smart business model, and it also it grows the hold business. Hold on, hold on, because I want to say something. I want to yeah. say something before you go. One of the things that he had a challenge with because he actually went out to Silicon Valley. And he raised upwards, eventually, upwards of about $40 million. This company is a juggernaut. He did his thing. If anybody who doesn't know Maven, go check it out. But I remember him saying specifically, they had no idea that this industry even existed. Because these are a bunch of hedge fund guys. They're a bunch of VC, venture capitalists. They are a bunch of people who are not from our world. They didn't know anything about black hair. They didn't know anything about weaves, beauty salons in the hood, and, and how you can find them on every corner. So he actually had to take a group of them into the hood in Oakland, California, and show them Proof that of concept. This thing was a huge market. So just to challenge you, you're not always going to build a business and people are going to come to you. Sometimes you have to bring them to the business and show them, okay, if I'm doing $100,000 now with your help, I can do $100 million. But let me show you the size of the market. And, 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 okay, so with that, when it's, uh, when it's a new business or an innovative business model, when it's reinventing the wheel, it's also up to the business entrepreneur to educate the community of investors that he is trying to pitch on exactly what the business is. When it's something very unique like that, that falls into like a little subset category where it has to come with an education because not everybody can jump in, which also uh, attributes to barriers of entry. Not everyone can get into that industry because they don't have the knowledge of how that industry works, as well as from the Afro American side, the way that we, you know, are very much a part of the community. So, that in that sense, I completely respect it because he took a unique business model and an innovative idea which is not familiar, and he made it basically like he's he's on top of. The only thing that probably stopped people from coming to him, ready for this, this is going to be funny. Remember when you used to get a thousand Instagram requests from the fucking, from the, the hair weaves and, and the braids uh, companies? Yeah. That could have been the only thing that could have messed up his algorithms because anytime people saw a request from hair weave company or anything like that, they were like, oh, they're at it again. They're, they're at it again. So, so I, I accept the challenge. But it's a complete diff different business model because it's completely unique. But from a sales perspective, as long as the numbers are in place, my question is, how did his banker at his bank not see the opportunity to give him a line of credit of, you know, 250000 to finance his receiv receivable for a three-month period? And then he can build on that without having to even acquire all those investors. He could be his own investor by doing it himself. Well, in, 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 in theory, that's real. I know you come from the banking system, but there are a lot of barriers for entry. One being black, African American, black, brown people. That's factual. Agreed. Agreed. I mean, I mean, there there is something called the Equal Opportunity, you know, Lending Act, which basically discriminates against that. And a banker and the bank can receive very, very strict, harsh penalties if they ever went through an audit, and they were caught to be biased against a certain race, color, or creed. So I I understand that, of course, you know, and the disparities yeah. that they that they face automatic. Yeah. Oh no, I was just saying that that might be so, but you know, trying to prove that, trying to fight to to say. 
I was discriminated against, that cost people money. And if they go into the bank, they probably don't have the money to begin with. So I'm just saying, yes, you're absolutely right. But there are a lot of times when people have great ideas, especially when they're coming from the hood. They just don't have the back-end infrastructure to create the, the long-term business plan or even the short-term five-year business plan to really put into a, a pitch deck the size of the market, the size of the demographic. What's I mean, so I, I, my, my suggestion is start simple. Start with the facts that you do know. What are your opportunity costs? What are your daily monthly and then current liabilities liabilities expense wise what is your month average of what you actually take in profit you know and then net and then do it on a yearly calculation you could you you can utilize your tax returns to basically tell the story for you but like i said in the beginning the only thing that an investor is looking for is what am i going to get for my money why should i invest it with you as opposed to the next person. So in closing, know your business, know your demographics, know your numbers. If you have the chance, watch Shark Tank and The Profit with Marcus Lamont. Those are the two key shows and you'll be super entertained. And if any of them are watching that are executive producers, holler at me for my podcast, the Verified Podcast, the best podcast in the world. <clears throat> but know your numbers, and know your expenses and be realistic with your expectations. Don't ask if your business value is only like a hundred thousand. Don't ask for five million and say, "Yeah, you can get five percent for that." Be realistic, okay? Salute, one love. Hold, Hold on, on, I got, a, I got, I got a question for you before you bounce. You're always great for great information, so I love every time you jump on. Uh, I'm not sure this person's name, Sunshine Taylor. Ask a question. I think it, you could probably answer it a little better than I can. You coming from the banking industry. Should Sometimes, you have a, a, is that, should you have a bachelor's or master's degree when applying for a business loan? Yes. My question is, why do you need a bachelor's or master's degree to get a loan? One of those, that's not a criteria. <clears throat> the bank only wants to see how they can get paid back. It's called debt service coverage. So when you're applying for a business loan, also, you know, let me let me give you guys a, a quick little a quick little uh, uh, lesson over here. It's Jack Daniels and ginger ale. I'm not sipping lean for anyone that wants to know. I'm way too uppity to be sipping lean. <clears throat> okay, so in applying for a business loan, what is the primary source of repayment of the business loan? If you have not had a business for over two years, the business cannot be the primary source of repayment of the loan. Let me give you an example. A cop or a firefighter decides to open up a business. Their fire department or policeman's salary is going to be the primary source of repayment of any business loan because the business is too risky. The bank has to, is always trying to mitigate risk of why they should lend you money. Similar <clears throat> to all my, my music artists out there, a record label needs to mitigate their risk of why they're going to put money into you as opposed to somebody else. They're not spending money on developing you. They want to know that you're already popping or you already have something going or they're going to get paid back. So a bank, very, very similar. Having a bachelor's or master's degree is great, if you're a, you know, if you're a doctor or a lawyer, because banks look heavily on doctors and lawyers because they factor in a barrier of entry and then how many years of schooling that you needed to go, how hard is it to get into this field? Like I created the metaphor for barriers of entry to become a president. And it looked like, you know, um, when banks look at doctors and lawyers and professional careers that you need eight years of schooling and countless tests, those look more heavily favorable. If you just want to buy a deli, like the United States of America, and you just walked into the deli and said, hmm, I'm going to buy this, you know, this deli, and I'm going to be president. There should be a barrier of entry to become president. Now back to the business. <laughs>
having a bachelor's degree is great, but how does that show the bank that they can get repaid on the money? Your sound is messing up. Your sound's messing up. How about now? Go ahead. If you still have student loans from that bachelor's or master's degree, the bank might see that as a higher risk to lend you money. You need to show how the bank is going to get paid back. Investors, you need to show them a rate of return on their investment. That's it. Those are the key principles that you need to be thinking of. Is it good to have a, business, uh, a bachelor's or master's degree? Sure. But that's not going like, to that's, that's make the bank give you a loan any, any quicker. Okay. Joe Paul, I appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you. Salute to all my movies. If anyone has any questions, I'll be over here when we check out the Verify Podcast. What look? My brother. Okay, I'm going to X him out. Okay, wonderful. It X'd out nicely. So we should be good. <clears throat> Anybody with any other questions in terms of acquiring business loans, business plans, anything like that? Let me see. Ooh, waiting to get in. Just sent the request out, y'all. God willing, it works this go round. IG is working. IG is working. Oh. What's up, brother? <laughs> How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I, I want Can you, you to get to, to, okay. to a place and stop moving. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Much better. Go ahead. Is that good? It, it, it's good. I can hear you just fine as long as you're not moving. Okay. Okay, we can hear you. Okay, you can hear me? Okay. Yeah, I asked the question about, um, well, first, um, I mean, well, first let me just start. Um, well, my name is Nigel, and I own um, Big Ben Designs. So basically, it's a customized hoodie and, and T-shirt apparel. So basically, if you want whatever you want on your, your T-shirt or your hoodie, I just put it on it. Um, I'm thinking about coming out with certain designs and um, you know trying to sell certain shirts and hoodies. So I'm coming up with that in my head now. But for now, it's just just customized. So and I kind of want to figure out what should I do from here, like as far as marketing, um, and maybe you know trying to get a website possibly, you know, up and running rather than just being paid from Facebook and Instagram. Okay, let me make sure I understand your business. You put people's logos on T-shirts and hoodies. Is that correct? Yeah, 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 logos. Or even if you just want something about, you know, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, you know, yeah, and something like this too. I made this shirt. You know, you know, Boogie Down Bronx. I'm, I'm from the Bronx, so stuff like that. Whatever you want. Okay, so... You don't specifically, you yourself, you don't have a clothing line. You just no. do the printing. Correct. But oh. in the future, I have things in my mind and, and different designs that I, I, I want to do in the future. Probably like sometime this summer. Okay. First and foremost, I see somebody in the comment who says IG influencers would help you. The only, and that's Joe Paul. Typically, I would agree with that, but if you're not pushing a clothing line, the influence, influencers out there don't really have anything that they can push that would, because you're really the manufacturer, for lack of a better way to put it. You are the person, the, the manufacturer, the printer. You're the person, if I wanted to go and put Power Move Makers on my shirt, I come see you, you take care of it. Correct, yeah. Okay. I here, first and foremost, you've got to get a website. It, it, is, it is vitally important that you get a website. Okay. And the reason, that I, the reason I say this to you, because I'm thinking off the top of my head, how I look at you kind of as the print shop, right? Uh -huh. if, it's, if it's me, and this is strictly off the top of my head, you have an Instagram page, correct? Correct, yeah. 
You have an Instagram page. Whenever yeah. you get, whenever, whenever you do a a batch of T-shirts, whenever you do a batch of hoodies for anyone, what you should do is offer them a discount. Whether it's 10%, 5% off of your total cost, and tell them that you want to be able to blast out your services through their media. Meaning, if Sean Prez comes to you for Power Move Maker shirt, say it costs $100. You say, Sean, I'm going to charge you 90 But I need you to give okay. me two free um, posts on your Instagram. So I got something like, I don't know, 5,000, 6,000 people on my Instagram that follow me. Those two posts saying, I got these shirts made by XXXXX, and he's giving a 20% discount. I'm sending business your way. So you have to, you, because you don't have a brand you're pushing, you have to use the people who are coming to you for their services as your marketing vehicle. Because it's not like you're pushing power move makers. I am. You're just making my shirts. But I need to be able to tell everybody, you're the guy who makes the shirts for me. No different. You're from the Bronx, right? Yeah. Okay. No different than back in the days. And I'll give you two real examples. Back in the days, and I forget the name of it because they were based out of the Bronx, but whenever anybody got their cars done, you know, uh, Funkmaster Flex, all of the, the, the rappers and all of the, the DJs used to use a certain car company that was tricking out everybody's car. So what they would do was say, look, I'll give you a discount on me doing the work on your car but give me X amount of shout outs on the radio. I'm telling you to do the same thing just virtually. So you can become okay. the guy that everybody knows that's doing the work. No different than <clears throat> you, you listen to rap music? Oh yeah, of course, sure, sure. Okay. You ever hear Jacob the jeweler? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> back in okay. the day, yeah. You ever hear, same thing, Ben the jeweler? These guys, they sell jewelry. But when people buy the jewelry from them, they're not giving them shout outs for no reason. People are saying, yo, my man Ben the Jeweler got me, you know, this ring, got me this chain. Go see him. Jacob the Jeweler, the same thing. When we was coming up, Jacob was hustling. And he got in bed with the Diddies and the Jay-Zs and this, that, and the third. But he blew up through our community. And he was yeah. giving them discounts on their jewelry. But they had to mention him every time they went on radio, in records. And we all know how Jacob blew. So you got to do the same thing. If you're the source, because right now you're the plug, you got to... Every time you do a shirt, every time you do a hoodie, you should exchange your services for the mentions and get a flyer made, a digital flyer, up until your website is up, and everybody who comes to you, tell them, I need two posts. I need you to shout me out. This is who makes my stuff. The stuff is quality. Have them become your evangelists. Have them become the people okay. who are talking on your behalf because it's not like you have a brand that you're selling, you know, Power Move Maker shirt. You're the plug, and they have okay. to, you got to position yourself that way. Does that help? No, yeah, no, no, that helps a lot. I mean, that's, 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 that's great facts, man. Um, yeah, like I said, I have things in my head, so I do plan to start something probably in the summer, but, um, you know, so I'll do something then, but. Definitely with the website and then start with, you know, making sure that people post it by giving them a discount, which is good. Really kind of think of that, but yeah.
you know, giving them a like a no, discount listen, listen. to make them shout me that out. That discount, I'm sorry, that, that discount, you got to remember, some of these people are going to come in and they got huge Instagram followers. You discount your service versus if you had to pay them to push it through their Instagram or push it through their Facebook or push it through their social channel, you couldn't even afford it. But they would do yeah. it happily if you discounted their services. And I'm telling you exactly. to get your website up because at the end of the day, no different than back in the days with, you know, certain jewelers or, or uh, these auto guys who were tricking out cars, they would always take pictures with the, um, with the stars and the entertainers and the celebrities that came to them. And you need to be able to show, you know, this clothing line that you love, I'm the one who's doing all their shirts. That clothing line that you love, I do all their hoodies. And take the pictures and have it so when people go to your website, they see, oh, he did that? He did that? He did that? You're credible. Right now, you're credible. They trust you, and they're going to give you the business. So okay. that's your little um, marketing plan for for you to move forward with and um you know hopefully god yeah really thanks man take it and with it. yeah thank you man i'm gonna i'm gonna you know be doing all those things and i'm gonna start up this weekend um so as far as a website do you think i should go the route trying to do it myself or pay someone to do it right now off the back because you know you know because i know paying someone have can you be expensive. ever designed a website I, I did something kind of basic before, well, you know, one of those, uh, I think it was a GoDaddy, okay. you know, something like well, that, what's a your basic name again? one. What's your name again? Name, no, my, my, my name is Nigel, but my uh, Instagram is Big Ben Designs. Okay, Nigel, I just asked you a question. It was kind of rhetorical. I didn't really expect the answer. Okay. I know you didn't design a website before. So to answer your own okay. question... <laughs> Pay somebody to do it right. You you get it? That's that that's like okay. me going and trying to print my own shirts. I want I want my shirts done right. So I'm gonna come to Nigel to knock it out for me because I know it's gonna be okay. right. I can't do it. I never did it before. So when you ask, do you yeah, need a yeah, website? Yeah. Should you do it yourself? Nah. Don't cut corners. Okay. You when 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 people come to your website, you want it to run without buffering. You want it to look professional. You want it to show your work in all its full glory. So the, don't 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 try to stretch yourself out with that. Stretch yourself out with growing your business. Let somebody who does websites do yours. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, we'll do, man. Thanks, man. You know, I always be watching this, so. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm always on Mondays and Wednesdays. I'll be on. Just, just listen to your knowledge, man. That's good. Nah, good. But I'm, I'm going to tell you something, Naj. I'm glad you stepped up because you asked a question tonight that I know a lot of other movers in our community could benefit from. So that's a dope okay. question, actually. I'm glad you stepped up with it. All right. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. All right. See you next right, time. Man. Be good, Naj. And, and do Take me a care. favor. Keep me posted yeah. on your progress. I want to see how this goes. Uh, yeah, I will. I will. All right. No problem. I will do that. All Take right, care, my man. My brother, be good. Come All on. right. Peace. Well, you X out. I don't want to even touch this. There we go. Shout to my man, Nigel Big Ben Printing. I think that's what he said. Nigel, do me a favor, Nigel. For anybody who's looking to get in touch with you, put your, put your information in the comments right now. Put it in the chat. Um... Let me see. We got any other questions, guys? We got any other questions? We got about another 15 minutes on this live. Does anybody got any other questions or anything else y'all want to discuss before we, um, yeah, Big, Big, Big Ben Designs. Big Ben Designs, and that's my man, Naju. He does all the printing for hoodies and T-shirts. Check them out, y'all. Let's movers support movers. What else we got here? We talking business plans. 
marketing. Uh, let me see. I was hoping to have my man Derek Ferguson in the building tonight. I don't know if he showed up, but Derek, if you're in the building, I want to have a deeper discussion with you on business plans. So please go ahead and hit that request button if you're here. He told me he had a meeting. He might be running over. Let me see. Oh, Vibranium Go, Derek, hit the request button. It's the two people that have the, it's, it's the icon with the two people. I see people saying use Shopify. That's another option for you, Nigel. Use Shopify to build your website. You can try it. I personally like to hire people to get stuff done for me. At least I know they're doing it right. Let me see if my man Derek is in Vibranium Go. And, and for anybody who is, before Derek comes on, please go follow him, Vibranium Go. Uh, let me see. Let's pray to God. Instagram is still treating me right tonight. d -Ferg. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How you doing, Prez? I'm good. I'm good. Derek, I know you had um, a call. You jumped off. I thank you so much for giving us some time. I appreciate you for always being there every time I call in this, in this community. Appreciate you. So thank you. No, no problem. And I did hear, I did hear Joe and I, and I heard Nigel. So I just was just, just been listening in. Uh, and I uh, think this is a great topic, really important topic. Okay, so what can you share with us? I'll pick your brain with a few questions. Um, you heard the conversation I have with um, Joe Paul. He comes from a banking background. But let me just ask you some random questions myself, and hopefully I can help some people in the community. Okay. Um, at what point should a business owner even consider creating a business plan? And what does a business plan even look like? Is it a page? Is it 50 pages? So you start there and we'll go from there. So I'm a strong believer that you need to write your business plan before you start your business. Um, you need to write your plan. The reason why is that, you know, many pitfalls that you face in your business, you could have identified in advance had you spent time thinking about it. So what I like to recommend to people is write your plan and then spend time trying to poke holes in it. And when you, when you keep poking and poking and poking, if it's easy to poke holes in it, it's going to be difficult to do well in the business. But when you get to the point where you've basically filled up all the holes and you can't really poke holes in it anymore, you're really ready to launch. So why, why do you do this? Why do the business plan in advance? Unless you have a ton of capital available to help fund your mistakes, you are going to have to make as few mistakes as possible to thrive in your business. So do as much as you can on paper. Uh, and when I say poke holes in it, it's you poking holes in it. It's uh, people you trust to read it and poke holes in it. It's uh, potential customers poking holes in it. Really important process to uh to take yourself through before you start putting your your capital at risk okay it's a great point um so you would recommend even if someone has a very small business this is not just for large-scale businesses no i would Light say small business right yeah really okay, let me tell you let me tell you why first off um simple things that a business plan will show you. One is how much money are you going to make, right? You may have an idea like, you know, a guy, Nigel, who's printing shirts. What's his margin, right? Like, is he making good money? Like, what, what, what is his margin? And when I do a business plan, so, you know, we can talk about the, the aspects of a business plan, but I'm going to understand the market and I'm going to understand the competition. So one of the things you should have in your business plan is everybody who is doing the service you're trying to do, what are they charging? How big is their market? How big is their customer base? And can you beat that? You're either going to beat them with better pricing or a better product. But if you don't have 
if you don't have either of those two, uh, you know, you're just throwing yourself into a situation where you're not going to win. Okay, somebody in the audience asked something, but I want to ask you something before we get to their question. What is in a business plan? How long should it be? Is it, is it you know, it, it, or, or it, is it is it like writing a book? Is it certain chapters? Like, what is a business plan, even in practical terms, look like? Yeah, so I would say there, there you know, it it can look many ways, but there are probably like eight eight to ten things you need in there. I'll just I'll run through them real quick, and yeah, I'll, I'll go real fast. What is your mission statement? What is your reason for being? That's what you start out with. I'm power moves. I'm going to inspire entrepreneurs. I'm using my experience to in, inspire entrepreneurs. Blah, blah blah. I'm doing it through social media. Blah blah blah. Right? Why 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 do you exist? Um, why and then why is your product or service different? The next piece is really a piece where you're going to really need to do some research, and that's your market analysis. So how big is the market that your business is in? What it, how do you define your market, right? So you're saying, look, I'm just doing business in the Bronx. I want to do business all across New York City. I want to do business across the U.S. or across the world. You know, you, you really need to define that because that defines the next move you make. So define your market and understand how big is the market and what part of the market you can really capture. Um, uh, ne next description is who's your management team? It may be just you. Uh, it may be, um, you know, you and an assistant or this, that, and the other. But who are who are the managers of the operation? And that by, by laying that out, it also will show you what am I missing? Am I missing a key uh, talent that I need to have in this business? So uh, then I would move on to what's your marketing plan? So how are you going to let people know about your product or service? Um, then you want to take a look at um, your strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Right. So here's the strength of my idea. Here's some weaknesses. Here's some opportunities and here's some threats. So I may be starting a business and there may be the potential that government regulation may set in. So I'm, I have a plumbing business, but you know what? I'm reading up and it looks like there may be some government government regulation that could hurt my business. You want to lay that out in your plan. And now and, and, and think about it first. Like This plan is for you first and foremost. Then it could be for somebody outside. But first and foremost, this is for you to assess your viability of being successful. Uh, the next thing is really when we get into the financial projections. So how much, uh, how, what are you going to do in sales? Uh, how much money, what is your profit going to look like? So that means your sales, your gross margins, your costs, your marketing costs, all of your costs, and then what are you left with? And then the next piece on top of that, you know, and, and I know Joe, uh, you know, in terms of banking, what's your cash flow? A lot of people will think about their P&L, revenues and profits, and then, then, then be surprised when they're out of money day one when they're actually selling product. You need to know what your cash flow is. And that's a calculation. If you don't know how to do it, someone else should do it for you. But you have to know that before, before you start your business. Uh, and then... Um, uh, you know, from there, it's just about, you know, then you bring it all together and say, in conclusion, here's what I'm looking to do. I'm starting a business the first the first three months. I'm going to be Bronx only, you know, over two years. I want to be New York wide. I'm going to need uh, $80,000 in capital. Uh, and my profit margins are X. I expect to make uh, $100,000 on that 80000 in capital, so on and so forth. So, you know, then you close it all off with a summary statement. But just to recap, I'm sorry, the other piece I want to say about your market is, your, is the competition. So marketing competition, to me, that helps you define whether or not you got something or not, right? What, how big is the market? Who are your competitors? Know everything about your competitors. Who's already doing it? And what do I need to know about them? Great information. Great information. Hold on. I got a couple of people asking questions. Um, Darius Logan asks, how do you define how much you do in sales? How do you define that? Well, see, it, it goes, it goes, uh, that goes back to market, right? Let's just say, um, let's go to something real simple. I'm selling lemonade in front of my house, right? So I got to determine, well, how much do I think I'm going to sell? So I got to know how much I'm going to make. 
So I got 20 houses on the block, uh, and each house has five people in it. So that's 100 people. I expect that maybe 20% of them are going to be outside. So my market is probably 20 people that I can possibly sell this lemonade to. So what portion of the market am I going to get? I'm going to get 100% of them. So I'm going to have 20 people. I'm going to get get 100% of them. And each cup of my lemonade is going to be $2. So therefore, I'm going to make my revenue will be $40. So you take that little microcosm of an example and you play it out for whatever your scenario is. But it's, it's as simple as the lemonade stand mentality. Who, who, what is your market? What portion of the market do you think you're going to capture? And then what does that translate into for revenues? Okay, great answer. Great answer. Just in the interest of time, I'm going to speed through some of these because people are asking great questions. JTW asks, how do you calculate revenue and sales if you haven't launched? Again, I think I would go, that's kind of the same answer, Prez. Like it's, uh, it's, it's, you have to base it on, you know, some analysis of the market you're trying to reach and then make some estimations and some projections. The key thing is if you can't figure out how to at least project, you know, uh, uh, revenue numbers or sales numbers that make sense, then you need to go on to the next idea. You know what I mean? Like if you, if you, if you can't see what, the revenue potential is, it may be something fun and interesting, but it may not be a business. Whoo, great answer, man. Great answer. Okay. Uh, who is this? Sister Nonprofits? I think that's what she, what it says, Sisters Nonprofit. Asks, what site would be good to guide you through writing a plan? Do you know of any websites out there that would be good to guide someone through writing a business plan? There are a lot of really good ones, uh, and there are some apps that actually will section it off for you. I don't have the names offhand, but I would say Google, uh, you know, search the app store. You will have plenty of options. Uh, there's a Forbes article, uh, Prez, when you told me we were going to talk about it. I just uh, look, looked up this Forbes article I referred to, which talks about this. A lot of material on this. This is easy information to get, so I would encourage you just to – uh, search and I and I can't just can't recommend one, but I think the you know it, they they're all they all will be useful information. They'll all provide you useful information. Okay, Ariel Candle Shop, Ariel Candle Shop, who has some amazing candles. I bought some of her candles. I love them. Um, so if anybody's into candles, please go visit Ariel Candle Shop. She has a great question. Uh, what are your thoughts on small business grants? And what should be included for strong consideration? Yeah, so small business grants are, you know, hard to come by, but maybe they, you know, you would have an opportunity to get them. In most cases, if you think about it, if someone's going to give you money for a small business, it'll maybe either be for nonprofit purposes or just some benevolence. So I would not, I would not bank my business on a small business grant, but if you, if you're going to, try to get a small business grant as you're defining it. Um, If you're going to try to get a small business grant, I think you got to think about it like a a beauty competition. I have to present to someone a business that's better than the others that they could potentially give this grant to. So again, it goes back to, it's got to be a good idea. It's got to be a good product. The market has got to make sense. You got to show how you can beat the competition and you got to show that the economics makes sense. At the end of the day, there's a reason why uh, some businesses fail and some businesses succeed. I'm not going to say it's all scientific. There's definitely a lot of luck and, and good fortune and being at the right place at the right time. But there are a lot of businesses that fail because the, I, the idea isn't uh, unique. Uh, there's no reason for them to, for, to be. And out the box, their profit model doesn't work. So that's why that upfront work is really important. And I've seen, I've read over the years, literally thousands of business plans. By page two or three, you know whether or not somebody has something that's different and interesting. And if the economics don't make sense, it's not worth reading the plan. Okay. Um, 
And guys, just in the interest of time, if you have any more questions, I want to be respectful to Derek and his time. He's literally giving you guys a master's class right now. Um, this is stuff you would have to pay for. Please take advantage of his time. Ask your questions. Derek, I got a question for you. Uh, you know, I would, again, I, I was, I was, I interviewed a gentleman, um, uh, not too long ago, he is the founder of Maven. It's a, Maven, it's a hair yeah. extension product. I, I, know, right? I know him. Yeah, I know okay. him. Yeah. You're familiar with the show? Very, very familiar, yeah. He said his business plan, he went and he took it. He, he's an MBA, um, very well educated, all of that good stuff. But he said when he got to Silicon Valley, um, they condensed his plan to about 10 pages. He said conventional wisdom taught him, in school taught him, you know, your business plan should be extensive. It should include all this. He said the people who he pitched to and who he ultimately got money from, they wanted it very small. They wanted to understand the market, what the growth potential was, and how much they could possibly make by investing. Yeah. Does this does this support what you've been telling us all night or or with the with the thousands of business plans that you've read is that more of an anomaly based on silicon valley and these venture capitalists out there yeah i think that again everybody you want to be efficient with everybody's time if if you have to make a uh uh if you have to make the case for your product and the market size and where you fit competitively, you may have to spend some more time doing that. I think, as you said, he was doing something that didn't exist. So maybe they were already bought in on, okay, the idea we get, now just tell us how we make money and prove to us there's a market. But you want to always, like I would say, I, for me, your information and what you gather and put together should always be uh, extensive. That doesn't mean you're showing everybody everything it's like anything else in life you gotta you have to have uh you have to have your best 15 minutes ready because you're not always getting more than 15 minutes with people doesn't mean i don't have another 100 pages at home it's like oh you want to see okay i'm starting a hardware store i'm gonna show you what the three hardware stores in my neighborhood did day by day for the last two years because i've been studying them but i may not have to bring that I may not have to put that in my plan or bring that to the meeting, but sure enough, I want to have it. Um, and I think, so I think what you, so I would never, I don't think you ever win with less information. <laughs> now there's a whole nother conversation around how you present it. You know, if you, and I will tell you the time when you can condense your information most effectively is when you have a bunch of it. Because you know what the key points are because you've analyzed all the information. So now you know, okay, I only need to say these five things. Because mm -hmm. now I have, I have in, in a lot of cases, uh, you know, when, when people um, haven't done their research, sometimes their summaries are long because they don't know what the key reason for being is or what their key advantage is because they haven't put that work in. There, so, and, I, I, and I'll give you, 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 know, you know our world. At Bad Boy, you know, you, you would get, you know, you would get somebody, somebody would fight to get 15 minutes, you know, to, to tell you something. And, and so you have to be, you have to have that 15 minute version available and ready. And it better, it better answer all the key questions. And going back to what um, uh, Joe was saying early on, at the end of the day, if, if you're coming to someone for an investment or if anybody's giving up their money, all they care about is how am I going to get it back? And how am I going to earn a return on it? So if that's not somewhere, uh, you know, very early on in the conversation, then, uh, you know, you're going to lose people. Understood. Yeah, guys, give it up for my man, Derek Ferguson. He just dropped crazy information. Derek, this was so helpful. Um, you you got to be a regular on this thing. I think I think we're going to have to do something together because I'm sitting here and I always tell everybody, this is, it, you know, of course, I'm hosting it, but I learned so much from it because you're just dropping so many gems, and I feel like I just got a master's class in this, um, in 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 putting together a business plan and what should be in it, uh, what what the things I should be thinking of. So, 
I'm definitely going to go back even myself and and go through all of the different points that you laid out. I think that, you know, it was incredible wisdom that you just dropped. And thank you so much for it. Great. Thank you, Prez. Look forward to seeing you next week. Hold it. Stay, stay on. But, guys, okay. for everybody, go up to, to the icon at, at the top. It should say Power Moves, Prez, and Vibranium Gold. Please click that. This way you can follow Derek Ferguson right now. You can follow him before he logs off. So just please, if you haven't followed him, go up there, click that that um, icon that says Power Moves, Prez, and Vibranium Gold. Follow him. This guy, you guys just saw for yourself. He just dropped so much great information. And, um, again, thank you so much for, for dropping in, Derek, and we'll be in touch. All right. Thank you, Prez. My brother. All right, guys. If there are any other topics that you guys want to discuss in our next Warrior Wednesday, please DM me. Please DM me and let me know if there are guests you want to have on, if there are topics that you want to go over. This is why we do what we do. We support each other. Thank you so much to Derek Ferguson for jump, jumping in and giving such great information this week. Um, to my brother Joe Paul, who's always, always, always just given of himself and his knowledge and his wisdom to this movers community. That's what we do for everybody who took time out to ask questions while Derek and Joe Paul were in. I, I salute y'all because this is what it's about. So if you have any topics that you want us to, to discuss next week, please hit my DM and let me know. And we'll bring it up next week. So last week we covered, uh, we had an accountant on and we talked, I think it was last week or the week before, where we talked about different business type, S-Corps, S-Corps LLC, um, C-Corps, so forth and so on. This week was business plans. And this all came from you guys. It didn't come from me. It came from you guys mentioning what it is that you wanted to really discuss and learn more about. Uh, Michelle Ayala, I see you. So welcome. Um, I don't know if you just jumped in, but I definitely see you. What up, girl? Coming in from, from Orlando, always supporting our movers community. Movers move, y'all. Keep moving out there. I'll see y'all on Monday for our Motivation Monday. If you have not checked out that um, Earn Your Leisure interview, please go on over to iTunes and Spotify. If you listen to it um, on audio, go head on over to YouTube and you can see the, um, the video of it. And I guess we'll end it there. Keep moving, y'all. Movers, one.